Now I'm going to show you how easy it is to lead this course. Please turn in your Becoming a Disciple Maker Leader's Guide to Session 9, and that's on page 123. So Session 9, page 123. You can see that the page starts with an unshaded box, which means that I will actually say something to my group. Please follow along as I present the first three pages of this session to my small group of disciple makers in training. You can see how user-friendly the material is as you watch us use it. Okay, group, welcome. This should be one of our most exciting studies. So will someone please pray that the Lord will do the teaching for us? Dave, would you like to lead us in prayer? Father, we just pray that uh, you'll lead us and guide us in all that you want us to know, that you'll do the teaching through Randy, and that we'll listen, take heed, we'll become trained disciple makers, and go and help fulfill the Great Commission. It's in your precious Son's name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, how many of you enjoyed last week's inspirational uh, activities? Good, okay. Are you seeing how each session builds upon the previous session for, us, for new Christians? Yes. So let's go ahead and review the five most basic spiritual disciplines. You remember from, from last week and the previous weeks, the first one is listen, listen to God's Word. The next one, read. read God's Word. The next one, study. study God's Word. The next one, memorize, memorize God's Word. Next one, meditate. meditate on God's Word. And the last one is apply. apply. Good. You remember those, and it looks like you're really grasping the material well. So before we continue, let's go ahead and review some key terms. Uh, what's the difference between discipleship and disciple making? Can someone tell me the difference between discipleship? Yes, uh huh. Disciple discipleship is learning different theologies and learning different terminology and different vocabulary that go along with the Christian faith. Mm -hmm. And disciple making is more of a relationship between two people. It's very one on one, very personal. And it's somebody who's mentoring you in your growth as a new believer. Good, super, okay. What's the spiritual goal of disciple making? The spiritual goal, anybody, Dave? Okay, well that's to help uh, future generations of new Christians to grow and mature in their faith, to spiritually multiply, and to also uh, help fulfill the great, uh, great Commission. Absolutely, okay. Would all of you agree that we're sitting here today because faithful Christians before us witnessed naturally to others? Yes. That's Absolutely. right. Well, during today's session, we're going to analyze the way Jesus trained disciple makers. Okay? Our, object, our objective is to learn from his example. Can someone continue reading for us uh, under Jesus' ministry example? Can someone read that for us? I will. Okay, thank you. First, let's consider three major truths. One, the Lord Jesus is, was, and always will be God's eternal Son. Two, being fully God and fully man, our Lord was the wisest person who ever lived. Okay, how many of you agree with that statement? Absolutely. Amen, okay, yeah. all right, can you continue? Yes. Three, because of his divine wisdom, he knew exactly how to invest his life in the most effective manner. Expressed another way, if there had been a better way to accomplish his spiritual mission, he would have known what it was and could have used it. Okay, can someone explain uh, Item number three in their own words. Okay, can you go ahead and do um, that? Basically, God, he's just very wise, um, and so he knows the best way to accomplish his spiritual mission, and he knows the most effective way to do it. Absolutely, okay. By the way, what was Jesus' spiritual mission? Anybody have some thoughts on what was Jesus' spiritual mission? Save the lost. Absolutely, save the lost, and and uh, create disciple makers who would fulfill the Great Commission. Okay, our next reader, uh, could, could someone read, it starts by studying the Lord's, can someone read that for us? I will. Okay. By studying the Lord's actions and His use of time, we can better understand how to implement His equipping methodology. When we follow His pattern of relational disciple making, spiritual multiplication can take place naturally during our lifetime. Okay. So we need to become familiar with three foundational principles. Number one, can someone read the first principle? It takes a blank to make a blank. Okay, anybody have any idea what those words would be? 
disciple in both cases. Okay, disciple, to make a disciple. Go ahead and write that in your fill in the blank area in your books there. It takes a disciple to make a disciple. Now can someone tell me why they think that it's true that it takes a disciple to make a disciple? Why is that true? Well, a non-believer can't lead a believer to Christ. Like you have to have been there before in That's order to right. lead somebody else. Right. You can't lead somewhere, someone, someplace that you've never been before mm -hmm. right. yourself. Okay. Can someone read the second principle, please? You need only a head blank start. head start. Blank head start. Anybody have any idea what the fill in the blank is on that? You only need a Short. short. Short, exactly. Okay. A short head start. You can go ahead and write that in your mm -hmm. blank. You know, you don't have to be a mature Christian in order to help somebody else grow. All you have to be is a maturing Christian and just be a few steps ahead of that new Christian or new member. What are some misleading thoughts that Satan may use to discourage us from becoming disciple makers? Anybody have thoughts on that? I know for me, my biggest one is I'm not old enough mm -hmm. that I need to be like in my 30s or 40s in order to like really be a spiritual mentor. Mm -hmm. um, I know that sometimes I don't feel qualified, and mm -hmm. that's something else that you know makes mm -hmm. me that, that hinders me. Um, also, like who am I to lead someone when I sin every day, mm -hmm. um, and that I'm not spiritual enough, and that I'm not close enough to God to to help somebody else out. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay. So the reality is God can use each one of us if we choose to step out in faith. The key is letting God work through us. And the Bible said it is God who works in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Just think what Jesus did with 11 ordinary men. They turned the world upside down, didn't they? Can someone continue reading for us on Jesus was definitely? I will. Okay. Jesus was definitely the greatest disciple maker the world has ever seen. He demonstrated his relational training methodology by the way he lived. His original 12 disciples were equipped for their ministries primarily by spending quality time with him. They were privileged to personally observe his sinless character, dependence on his father, and highly effective ministry skills. Through this process, they learned how to become strong, godly, multiplying disciples themselves. Okay, you can see how easy the material it is to use. The leader, if you have a box that's unshaded, tells you what to say. If the box is shaded, tells you what to do or an answer to a question. And if the material is unboxed, you simply ask your group members to read that material. Now it's your turn to experience using the materials. I can't see you, but if your church has two or more small group leaders being equipped, Please form teams of two so you can briefly practice role playing, men with men and women with women. My small group members are also going to break into teams of two. To demonstrate how easy and enjoyable this course is to teach, I'm going to ask you to lead the rest of session nine without any preparation. Those of you who are on the right side of the team, raise your hands. You're going to be discipler number one. Okay? Discipler number one, please take out your Becoming a Disciple Maker Leader's Guide and turn to page 126. Again, disciplers number one, take out your Becoming a Disciple Maker Leader's Guide and turn to page 126. You're going to be a small group leader and present pages 126 through 128 to your teammate who represents your small group. Go ahead and write those pages down, pages 126 through 128. Again, discipler number one, you're going to be a small group leader and present pages 126 through 128 to your teammate who represents your small group. Those of you who are on the left side of the team, raise your hands. Your disciples number two, okay? Disciples number two, please take out your Becoming a Disciple Maker Student's Guide and turn to page 76. Again, Disciples number two, take out your Becoming a Disciple Maker Student's Guide and turn to page 76. You're going to role play as a small group member. Before you begin your role play, let's look at page 126 and review the boxes. Remember, 
If the material is unboxed, ask your student to read that material aloud. When you come to an unshaded box, verbally deliver that material to your small group member. The shaded boxes provide the answers to the questions you'll be asking. And when you come to an underlined word, see if your small group member can figure out the answer, but if they can't, go ahead and give them the answer so they can fill in the blank in their student's guide. Now, disciples number two, don't feel left out. Disciples number one, when you arrive at page 129 in your leader's guide, simply change roles with your teammate so disciple number two can become the small group leader and then you can finish the rest of the session. Okay, so go ahead. Discipler number one arrives at page 129 in the leader's guide. Simply change roles with your teammate so discipler number two can become the small group leader and you can become a student. I hope you enjoy role playing the rest of this session. It's usually the most favorite part of the workshop. Thank you.